I vividly remember how it was to be a new Tenno in Warframe, and to say that the new player experience is a bit uh, abrasive would be a massive understatement. But I'll tell you what, there were a couple of things that massively helped me as well. One of them was the yearly Warframe anniversary and the weapons they offered with it. Today, my friends, I have the absolute pleasure of revisiting the Dex Furist. This is an absolutely insane bullet hole style of weapon that is ideal for newer players coming into the game, but also for veterans looking to spice up a bit of bullet holes, if you know what I mean. As always, my name is Lazar, and I got a couple of builds lined up. Something cheap, affordable, something that a more newer Tenno can get into. But fear not, my veteran friends, we also got the endgame setup. Galvanized mods, prime mods, a riven, take this one to steel path and see what exactly it's capable of. You want a preview? That said though, please bear in mind that my builds and guides usually take a more new player friendly approach, simply because I want anybody watching to understand how the weapon functions and how it should be built. My primary goal with this guide is to teach newer players. So in case you're a vet and you already know most of this stuff, you can either skip ahead or have a bit of patience. And with that out of the way, let's jump into the Dex Furious. Let's begin by checking out how the weapon handles without any mods equipped, and for that, just a couple of our regular free shots. The Dex Furious is a automatic secondary with a hitscan attack. The weapon fires pretty accurately for the bullet holes that it is, but obviously when it comes to headshots you should be within the 10 to maximum 12 meter range, otherwise you're risking of putting some of those precious bullets into walls, the ground, the air, whatever else but not your enemies, because as you can see the recoil on this one does have a tendency to shake and this will be the standard 15 meter test. Yeah. Not exactly fantastic, is it? I mean, take a look. You essentially spray and pray, so I would not go for accuracy shots further than 12 meters. That said, the weapon might not be accurate, but if it's not accurate, at least it has a whole lot of bullets to put into your target. So even if you don't get the headshot, it's fine. Even though, ideally, you would want to get consistent headshots, so it's important to kind of build into that direction to further increase the power of the weapon. The reload on this one is on the quick side and you got a huge magazine of 100 and a pretty hefty ammunition reserve as well. The problem is it's not hefty enough in the sense that you get 100 in the magazine and another 400 which means 4 reloads. And that might sound like plenty but in actual missions you're gonna run out of ammo pretty quickly so modding for a bit of ammo regeneration is definitely not a bad idea. But let's take a closer look at stats to see exactly what we're dealing with. Mod capacity is gonna be 60 out of 60 as soon as you get this one from the event because you see this weapon comes with a Oro King Catalyst already installed. So you're already up 20 plat on this one. You don't have to buy the Oro King Catalyst or farm for it or craft it for that matter. Essentially, this was one of the reasons why I played a lot with the Dex Furious while I was mastery rank 7, 8, something of the sort. I didn't have the resources to upgrade my weapons back then so having it already installed was a pretty huge deal. And the weapon slot comes with it as well. There's one thing that does not come with it, the Forma. Yeah, you're gonna still need to Forma this one. If you wanna get the most out of it, you're looking at five Forma. But considering you're gonna be probably being a bit more newer to Warframe and you don't have all the mods just yet, two to three Forma will do for the build I'm recommending you. Speaking about the build, you're gonna see the empty arcane slot for me. Forget about this one for the time being and do not unlock it. Keep it as it is for the end game. If you still want to use this weapon later down the line, definitely go for it. But for now, keep it locked. You're gonna save yourself some nice resources. As for the excellent slot, I would like to say, hey listen, you don't really need it, but the thing is you kinda do with pistol ammo mutation for the reasons we already mentioned. Can you live without it? Yes you can, especially at lower levels, but it is definitely something you should bear in mind. If the ammo is not a concern, then you can still go with steady hands at minus 60% weapon recoil. And with that one equipped, I wanna show you the 60, 50 meter test one more time. Hmm? Hmm? 
That, my friends, is a whole lot better than before. And that's what Minus Recall does in Warframe. It will add DPS by adding better usability. A weapon that is easier to use, easier to aim, and easier to get headshots with will be dealing more damage. It's not so easily quantifiable simply because usability carries a higher degree of subjectivity than something like, hey, more damage, hey, more crit chance, and so on and so forth. But it should definitely not be ignored. The accuracy, as you saw there, not exactly fantastic. Ammo maximum 400 ammo pickup 60 fire rate of 20 which is pretty good magazine 100 alarming reload of two seconds and the riven disposition five out of five because this is not a very popular weapon now there's two sides to ribbons right now if you're a newer player coming to the game keep in mind that you should not bother with these for the time being they will not unlock for you until mastery rank eight nine something of the sort an ideal ribbon for the dex furious we can talk about this one later but you gotta go for multi-shot essentially some critical damage and some critical chance maybe if not you can even go for the route of elementals on this one so my advice to you would be to forget about ribbons for now if you're a veteran you know what you're gonna do already. You don't need my advice now, do you? Do you? Trigger automatic critical chance is not fantastic at 14%, but my friends, it's still usable. And yes, we will take full advantage of it. 2.0 critical multiplier, which is what I like to call the standard of Warframe. Status chance is good at 28%. Especially, especially considering how many bullets you're going to be putting into your targets, how fast. That is very key when it comes to discussing status chance. How many pellets, projectiles are you firing with a single shot? How fast are you attacking that target? How many damage instances are you generating per second? When you're thinking about status chance, think about that. Damage layout. Impact, Puncture, and Slash. You have the three physical types in Warframe. The most powerful, arguably, is gonna be Slash. Slash because of the proc it offers. This one offers the most powerful proc in Warframe, a damage over time on your target. And in combination with the Vital Status effect, and you have yourself the meta that has been dominating rage weapons in Warframe, and melee weapons in Warframe, for the past, I want to say, oh yeah, I remember since the start of 2020 when the elemental changes occurred. So basically, you're looking about three years worth of meta. a boy, DE. The point is, Slash is fantastic, but this one has a whole lot of puncture. Is that good? Well, you see, there's two sides to this argument. First of all, it's good because it deals extra damage to heavily armored targets, but that's the contact damage that puncture has. Its actual status effect? Not so desirable as something like Slash. Still, it's not bad. And Impact, which is still the most hated in Warframe, even though it's not as useless as it once was. Now let's have a look at a standard build and we'll talk more about elemental priorities. Damage is Hornet Strike, hold the phone. If you don't have the Endo to max this one out, two from the top will be fine. Your priority is gonna be multi-shot with Battle Diffusion as well as Lethal Torrent. You don't have Lethal Torrent? If memory serves, and I hope that it does, please correct me in the comment section if I'm wrong. This one is a Nightmare mod. You get it by doing Nightmare missions if you don't want to trade for it. And Nightmare missions are Nightmare in name only. They're really not that difficult. The modifiers that you get in those missions are overcomable rather easily. Get yourself Little Torrent because it's a fantastic mod that you're going to be using on a whole lot of secondary weapon builds. Creeping of the Bullseye, 200% critical chance at minus 20% fire rate. I can afford to lose a bit of fire rate, but that 20% does cost me 8 overall fire rate. 200% critical chance brings my critical chance to only 42%. Not fantastic. Creeping Bullseye is a corrupted mod. It offers you a huge chunk of something, but also takes away a bit of something. Corrupted mods in Warframe are extremely powerful. You'll find them on your primary weapon builds, secondary weapon builds, and your Warframes as well. So you need to get the farming corrupted mods. The farm itself is not too difficult, but it may take a while to actually get all the corrupted mods you need. And there are plenty which are actually useful. Link the cards right now for a full and detailed guide on how to farm corrupted mods. You can get to it later. Next up we got Target Cracker because you see in Warframe critical chance without critical damage is kind of pointless. Now you can obtain both critical chance and critical damage from outside sources. And by outside sources I mean something like Warframe buffs, companion buffs, Warframe Arcanes and so on and so forth. For now we're gonna go with Target Cracker but there is one slightly more powerful option and this one is called Sharpen Bullet. 75% but it's on kill, lasts for 9 seconds and it's only while aiming. So if you enjoy hip firing this is really not gonna be good 
40-75% versus 60%. For now, we will keep Target Cracker on because this one is the more constant one. Even though Sharpen Bullets, again, as long as you are comfortable with the gameplay style, is the superior mod to have on the weapon. Next, what you will see on the build are three 60-60 mods. You got Jolt, Pistol, Pestilence and Scorch. Jolt together with Pistol, Pestilence are going to be forming corrosive damage. And finally, Heat will be kind of left alone outside of the Elemental Combo. That is because Elemental Combinations on weapons are always 2x2 two two from top left to bottom right. That means Jolt will be combining with Pistol, Pestilence to form corrosive damage right here and Scorch will just offer its heat value. If I was to add another elemental combo, for example, instead of Target Cracker or if the weapon already had an element on it by default, it would have combined with heat. Unless it was heat, then it would just make more heat. Let me talk to you about proc priority. The values that you see here are not only the contact damage values. It also translates into proc priority or elemental weight. You might also call it like this. The higher the number, the higher the proc priority. So when you're doing a proc on a target, according to your status chance, yes, when you're doing a status on your target, the highest chance right now is corrosive. That's going to be the highest chance to proc, but you're going to be capping out at 10. Heat, however, you can stack up up until, I don't know, does heat even have a cap? You can go into hundreds of heat procs, so bear that one in mind. To this idea, it can be beneficial to do the following. Now, this is an old trick, a veteran's trick in Warframe, and you can do this. You can take an unranked pistol pestilence and use this one. You're going to be losing yourself some status chance, but in this case, what I'm doing is lowering the proc priority of corrosive since it's capping out at 10. I'm putting so many bullets into my target so fast, and in lowering the proc priority on this one, I'm hiring the proc priority on the other ones. Essentially, I'm making room. I can definitely go for an approach such as this. I don't need a million corrosive procs like I used to. This was an old meta once upon a time. Heat will be more beneficial, but there's a caveat to that. Even though it may be a good idea on purpose, you're still trading in status chance and you're trading in a bit of damage as well. So for the time being, forget about it. It's an old trick and it can work wonders on specific builds, but for the time being, leave them maxed out. Jolt is a problem if you're a newer player coming to the game because Jolt can only be obtained from Battle Kit here, the Void Trader. He's a Void Trader, comes every two weeks, he offers us exotic stuff. And he used to be a whole lot more better than he is. The problem is, right now you cannot go out and farm Jolt. You can buy it, you can trade for it on the trade chat, but you can't get it right now. Which means you have the following option. Don't have Jolt? Convulsion instead. Convulsion instead? We're gonna go like this and now the build is new player friendly. As for Scorch, this one from Spy Mission. Pistol Pestilence, Corrupted Vor in the Void. Honestly, there's no excuse to you not farming all of these mods. And again, if you don't have the Endo, prioritize Multi-Shot, then the Elementals Hornet Strike, leave two even free from the top. It's gonna be fine as is. Now let's test out the build as following. And I'm gonna make sure that on my Nidus, I don't have anything that would skew the test results. No corrosive projection, no void school that will actually increase the elemental damage. Now, considering you're a newer player, or I'm assuming that most of you are newer players, level 120 seems awfully high for you. How about level 60s? Do you even see level 60s? I think this is a more MR appropriate test, especially considering who this weapon is actually for. So we're gonna spawn in Corrupted Heavy Gunners, level 120. These represent the Corrupted Faction. We've also got the Exo Gogstad, which have a whole lot more EHP. That means effective HP. They have more armor and health, so they are tougher to kill, even though they look kinda similar. Now, do you remember what I taught you about Elementals and how do they combine? How do they combine? Two by two from top left to bottom right. So what did I do here? That means Scorch now is combining with Pistol Pestilence, so on my weapon, I have gas and electricity. Gas is fantastic against Corpus, but in this case, it's definitely not fantastic. So what do I do? Done. And you're back to heat and corrosive. Now, about those targets. Take a look at that. Absolutely shredded a level 60 corrupted heavy goon. And you shouldn't really see corrupted heavy goons unless, of course, you are doing a whole lot of relic cracking. And you should do a whole lot of relic cracking because if you're new in Warframe, there's a whole lot of nifty stuff inside those relics. And of course, the most MVP item out of all Warframe, 
Forma Blueprint. Yes, that's what you're gonna be looking for, my friend. Forma Blueprint non-stop, all day, every day. You gotta craft yourself Forma every single day. If there's not a Forma crafting in your foundry, then you're doing something wrong. Trust me, ask any veteran worth his salt, they are still crafting Forma even as we speak. Go for Forma. And that's the new player friendly message of the day. As you can see, the performance of the weapon, I mean seriously, it's 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 cramming through enemies with no problem. It's absolutely annihilating, but it does have that problem we talked about. Ammunition. Ammunition is going down. So I went for recoil, but of course you can go for pistol ammo mutation, which will definitely be the more safer route, especially if you're creaming targets one after another like so. Now, my friends, <coughs> excuse me, I caught a bit of a cold. I want you to see the difference between headshots and body shots. Multipliers in Warframe are essentially everywhere. It's important for you to know them, especially location-based multipliers, critical multipliers. I got a full and nifty guide on that. Link the cards right now. For the time being, take a look at what happens when I do body shots. I'm consuming a whole lot more ammo to take out one single target. There's a pretty big difference between going for a headshot and going for something like a body shot. Take a look at that. The difference in bullets is absolutely sky high. So again, go for headshots as long as it is a critical weapon at the very least, because you will be getting yourself bonuses. Keep in mind that not all factions have their head on their head. For example, the MOAs, the weird little robot things, their fanny packs are kind of like their head, and the multiplier there is 3x, but then they don't have a second multiplier. Again, it's a bit more convoluted than you might think. It's all in the guide I already linked you. And this kind of concludes the new player portion of the guide. You're looking at something like this as a jumping off point. But if you're not a new player, then you can access the full power of the weapon if you have the correct mods. In this case, we have a Riven, we got Damage Puncture and Critical Chance. This is a Riven I had since 2018, I wanna say. It could be a whole lot better. The Puncture is not exactly fantastic there, but it'll do nicely for this demonstration. Galvanized Diffusion is a must galvanized shot. They also got Prime Pistol Gambit, Prime Target Cracker. And you might say, hold on there, why not use Creeping Bullseye, because 200% is more than 187%. Honestly, I don't want to sacrifice the fire rate for just another 13x critical chance, which won't matter all that much anyway, in my case. One last thing I want to point out, instead of Lethal Torrent, you can use something like a Bane mod or a Faction mod. That would be a good idea for a damage over time build. Even for a raw damage build such as this one, it would still make a good idea. You can even swap out the 60-60s for 90s if you so desire. My target one are corrupted, one are grenier, so it doesn't really work all that well. That and also I'm not a fan of these blasted Bane mods or faction mods. Secondary Deadhead is a must considering we are going to be going for raw damage once again on this weapon. Because as you saw there, there's no slash and vital on this one. We're using brute strength, which is why it's okay to go for the 90s instead of the 60s. Oh, okay, so they were level 60. My bad, my bad. I forgot to pump up the level of the targets. I was, I was a little bit shocked of... I know it deletes them really quickly, but not level 60. Let's go to level 120. And of course, we're going to be spawning the exact same targets as before, just higher level. All right, that looks more reasonable. But even so, my friends, I doubled the level. I went to 120, and the weapon performs so much better. That's the power of the right mods, right build, and simply understanding what you're doing in the game. Now, make no mistake, if you're the type of veteran player that enjoys doing, I don't know, you want to do something like uh, really long survivals and want to fight enemies in the thousands, a raw damage strength approach on this weapon will not carry you past level 200. Past 200, I wouldn't use something of the sort. I would use a different weapon. Which weapon? You want? It's been, uh, look at the cards right now for the best secondary weapon in the game. I kid you not. It's absolutely fantastic. As for the Dex Furious, what more do you want? I mean, seriously, what more do you want? This weapon is offered for free with its own potato already installed and its own slot. And it absolutely melts high-level targets when built correctly. How about we take it into some actual gameplay? Steel Path? 
Welcome to Steel Path, my friends. Now, we're going to be fighting the Corrupted. So, what I did in this case is equipped a uh, Prime Expel Corrupted. So, we also got a Faction Mod. And, of course, this being a Galvanized setup, we're going to have to get a couple of kills in order for the weapon to be in full swing. My Warframe of choice is Revenant. That's going to stun targets and offer me tons of survivability, which will make it easier for me to get my damage on. And, as you can see, I have no issue whatsoever taking out these targets. So, you can really breeze through Steel Path. What is the point of this exercise? To show you that a weapon such as this one can still clear steel path without any issue whatsoever. I mean, if you blink, they're dead. So yes, my friends, go once again for headshots. The Dex Furious, a lowly beginner level weapon, has enough firepower to absolutely annihilate whatever stands before it. Granted, within reason. Even the capture target, I think this was... Is this the... I think he's dead. I think I killed him while he was... Yeah, there you go. No problem whatsoever. This is the kind of performance you're looking at at the Dex Furis. There's a lot of comparisons to be made between this one and the Prime variant, the A Furis Prime. And I prefer this one, you know why? Riven Disposition. Riven Disposition, if you're a veteran and if you want to build this weapon and have a little bit of fun with it, Riven Disposition, Riven Disposition will make a huge difference for it. So I highly recommend you give this one a spin over the Prime. Of course, you can have a look at that guide as well to see exactly what's up with the Prime. Look at the cards right now for that one. As for this one and its performance in Steel Path, honestly, I don't feel I need to say anything more. If you want to clear the entirety of Steel Path with it, rest assured it is possible. Is it the optimal weapon for that? No, can't say that, but it will be chomping through targets. Look at that, a Corrupted Heavy Goon and a Lancer Butcher, whatever it was there. No problem whatsoever. Look at my ammo. It's important to note I've been killing targets for the past couple of minutes and my ammo is steadily... I do have pistol ammo mutation if that's not enough for you and how much fire rate you have in that case I would recommend you go with prime pistol ammo mutation and if you're a vet you should have it by now You can make the weapon perform even better than this however But for that we're gonna have to go back to the simulacrum and the ever so lovely lady mirage prime Corrosive projection is definitely a smart idea against heavily armored targets, but this is not the end-all be-all. So if your build calls for loot detector, physique, or whatever else aura you prefer, I heard brief respite is quite popular nowadays, go for the aura of your choosing. If you're newer to the game and having energy issues, you can go with Xenuric and Energy Siphon. And if you don't know what Xenuric means just yet, you will, I just don't want to spoil it for you. So that will solve some of your energy issues. Arcanes, however, are a lot more impactful in Warframe. Arcane Avenger is exactly what the doctor ordered for this weapon. I got 70 something percent. With 45 percent from this one, I'm going over 100 percent. You see, this is a bonus additive after. It simply stacks on top of what you already have and it doesn't care about the base critical chance of your weapon. Not only that, it's so awesome that it stacks to your primary, secondary, melee, even to your organ at the exact same time. The catch with this one? is on damaged, on damage 21% chance. So it's not ultra reliable, but reliable enough to use. As for your second arcane, honestly, this should be for your Warframe, your barrier, your energize, or whatever else you want. If you want a bit more fire rate, there is an option for that, but here's the MVP, my friends, get ready for it. The best arcane you can use for a setup like this. Arcane Pistolaire. This is absolutely amazing. Read, on pistol headshot kill, 60% chance for a massive 102 Ammo efficiency for 12 seconds. Pistol, headshot, kill. That means no damage over time kills, just contact damage direct from your weapon. And this will make it seem like your ammo never goes away. It's an absolutely insane arcane that solves my problem, my heavy duty ammo issue. You gotta get yourself pistolier. For this weapon in particular, I would even argue it's better than Avenger. So if I'm going like so, then I should definitely forget about the ammo mutation. In my case, it already became more important to get more headshots, so I'm gonna go with steady aim. And again, we're gonna de-equip this one, we're gonna go with Battle Diffusion. Battle Diffusion? Lethal Torrent? As we do have two factions in this test. One more time, my friends, we're gonna be spawning in the Corrupted Heavy Goons and the Exo Gugstad. We're gonna pump up the level to 165, unpause them so they can hit me and I can get my glorious buffs. For a companion buff, I'm gonna be using the Panzer Volpofala, which is immortal, and it's gonna help me get procs on my targets. What procs? Vital procs, my friends. Arguably some of the most, if not the most important proc in Warframe. I'm gonna activate Empower, Mirage's free ability Eclipse, and her ever so lovely clones. Now, for some damage upon my targets. Take a look. 
I want precision headshot kill. If I don't get precision headshot kill, I'm not gonna be getting myself that yummy ammo efficiency. But take a look. See what I mean? This is why Arcane Pistolier is absolute freaking MVP. How could you not like this? There's no trickery going on here. This is just Warframe buffs together with Arcanes, essentially the whole shebang. And you too, my friend, can roll through content like nobody's business. The reason why I took it slow initially is just so you can see exactly what this one is capable of. Because this weapon is fully capable of my favorite magic trick. But now you see him. Now. You don't. All you gotta get, my friend, is a couple of headshots and keep on rolling into that sweet, sweet ammo efficiency. I could stop firing, I just don't want to. Why would you? They were still alive. And that kind of wraps up the build guide on the Dex Furis. My friends, this is an amazing weapon. You gotta get yourself this one, especially considering all you gotta do is a short mission and it already comes with a potato in the slot. So you're not looking at a heavy investment for this one. Highly recommend this weapon. It has been one of the weapons that has carried me through the lower mastery ranks of Warframe. And now I have the pleasure of recommending it to you. As always, my name is Belazar. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like, favorite, share, and subscribe only if you enjoy the content. If you got any feedback for me, I would love to read that in the comment section down below. Also in the comment section down below, please vote on what should be the next weapon review. I have an Excel with everything and I plus one them according to your votes. You can also catch me on Twitch, Facebook, Twitter, all the usual places. And if you love the content and you want to help me keep making it, consider supporting us via Patreon. There's going to be a link in the upper right portion of the screen right about now. But until next time, my friends. Bye-bye.